there are some real life stories that will even make scary movies look mediocre. Here's a list of 5 real life horror stories that will shock you. Number 5. A Deadly Exorcism In August 2016, a man by the name of Kennedy Ife was restrained at a house in Einfield, North London. The Old Bailey, which is the Central Criminal Court of England and Wales, heard his parents and brothers believed Kennedy was possessed by evil spirits, so they set about curing him. The jurors from the court were connected with the Jesus Sanctuary Ministries in South East London. This all started when Kenny became aggressive, biting his father while threatening to cut off his own penis. The family made it their mission to cure Kennedy by restraining him and using repetitive prayer over the next three days. Kennedy's brother Ray said that his brother's actions were definitely shocking to hear, but he did not consider calling professional help because it was a domestic issue. Unfortunately, Kenny did not survive the overwhelming amount of force that was put on him. His brother Harry called emergency services where Kennedy was pronounced dead from dehydration. While police were at the scene, one of the brothers allegedly carried out an attempted resurrection by chanting and praying for Kennedy. The case was taken to court, where Kenneth Ife told jurors he ordered his sons to take shifts and use overwhelming force, but denied that an association with cults, occults, and secret societies placed any part in the death of Kennedy. Kennedy Ife's parents, Kenneth, age 64, and Josephine, age 56, along with his brothers Ray, 33, Harry, 32, Colin, 26, Samuel, 20, and Daniel, 20, were found not guilty of manslaughter and were also cleared of false imprisonment and causing or allowing the death of a vulnerable adult. Number 4. Dead Animals in the Walls a family from Auburn, Pennsylvania bought a home back in 2011, and the home inspector cleared it and found nothing wrong with the house. That is, until one year later, the family decided to insulate the home better, and they made a horrifying discovery that the walls were already insulated, except with dead animals. All the animals were wrapped in old newspaper from the 30s and 40s. After finding the dead animals, the family sent some of the bones and artifacts to experts to try and get some reason as to why someone would do such a thing. The experts said the former homeowner was likely practicing a form of Dutch magic called powwow, which is believed to treat ailments and gain physical and spiritual protection. It is believed the spell practicing of powwow is mainly positive, but it also has within it a tradition of darker spells, and even such things as conjuring demons. Some of the family members got very sick after discovering the rotting corpses, and the smell still lingers, along with the mystery of what really happened in there. Number 3. Florida Devil Worshipping Teachers are supposed to be caring of students while helping them succeed and flourish into adulthood. Unfortunately, this teacher decided to go off normal curriculum and teach demonic rituals instead. In June of 2012, a few friends noticed that Danielle Harkins, a 35-year-old school teacher, began acting strange. Daniel Harkins told the students they needed to rid their bodies of demons as the group gathered before dusk Saturday around a small fire near the St. Petersburg Pier. They should cut their skin to let the evil spirits out, police said, she told the children. Then they needed to burn the wounds to ensure that those spirits would not return. When Harkins held a lighter to one teen's hand, the wind blew the flame out, police said. That prompted her to douse his hands in perfume before setting it on fire. The boy suffered second degree burns. Another teen was cut on the neck with a broken bottle. Harkins then used a flame to heat a small key, which she then used to cauterize the wound. The police were notified because a friend of one of the students who participated in the ritual raised alarms. However, none of the students themselves told their parents about the event or would even comment following the arrest of Harkins for aggravated battery and child abuse. 
Danielle refused to inform authorities exactly what it is she was trying to accomplish and what type of religion would require such drastic measures. Number 2. The Phone Stalker This one has a serious scream vibe to it, which if you guys don't know, is a movie about a masked killer that would call his victim with a really creepy voice and questions. In 2007, there were a series of phone calls taking place with one victim being a 16-year-old girl named Courtney Kuykendall from Furcrest, Washington. It all started when Courtney began receiving text messages. Upon looking at these texts, she's met with messages from her friends asking her why they had gotten text messages from her simply saying the word gay. Now, one could be mistaken for thinking it was a dumb, immature prank on Courtney's part, except for one problem. She did not send those texts, at least not herself. Not long after that, Courtney, as well as her friends and family, all started receiving threatening text messages and phone calls from an unknown person who they all later referred to as restricted. The family say the calls came in at all hours of the night threatening to kill their children, their pets, and grandparents. Voicemails arrive, playing recordings of their private conversations, including one with a local police detective. The caller knows, the family said, what they're wearing and what they're doing, and after months of investigating, police seem powerless to stop them. This went on for months, and the family reported that the caller had a scratchy voice and would constantly threaten they would slit the family's throats. When the Furcrest Washington police tried to find the culprit, the calls were all traced back to the Kuykendall's own phones, even when they were turned off. It gets worse. The Kuykendall's and two other Furcrest families told ABC News that they believe the callers are using their cell phones to spy on them. They say the hackers know their every move, where they are, what they're doing, and what they're wearing. The callers have recorded private conversation, the families and police said, including a meeting with a local detective. For reasons still unclear to this day, the mystery appears to have trailed off from there. There have been no new follow-ups, arrests, persons of interest, or anything since the attention on the case reached its peak. Some sources hint that the FBI did get involved, and that the call stopped then, but that's it. Let me know if you guys think this was some type of virus, hack, or if it was just a hoax, with Courtney being responsible for a sick joke. I don't really know what to think, but it'll definitely make me think twice before picking up for unknown numbers. Number 1. The Death of Elisa Lamb This story is one of the more popular ones, and I remember first hearing about this a couple of years back. It still absolutely blows my mind and gives me the chills when I watch the video and hear the story. Elisa Lam was last seen on January 31st, 2013, in the lobby of the Cecile Hotel in downtown Los Angeles. Elisa was on vacation and was documenting her trip and checking in with her parents, calling them every day. Those calls suddenly stopped, and police got involved to help parents with the search. They had nothing. The following month, the LAPD released elevator surveillance footage of Lamb before her disappearance. The footage shows Lamb behaving strangely in the elevator, appearing to talk with invisible people, peering around the corner of the door, crouching in the corner, and opening and closing the door. Unfortunately, this video only raises more questions than answers, and theories include a broad range from psychotic episodes to demonic possessions, to unknown assailants possibly just out of the camera's view.
Around that time, hotel guests started reporting weird things happening with the Cecile Hotel water supply. A CNN report releases statements from a few people at the hotel. The shower was awful, said Sabina Bogg, who spent eight days there during the investigation. When you turn the tap on, the water was coming black first for two seconds and then it was going back to normal. The tap water tasted horrible, Bogg said. It had a strange, very funny, sweetie, disgusting taste. It's a very strange taste, I can barely describe it. For one week, they never complained. We never thought anything of it, she said. We thought it was just the way it was here. The morning of February 19th, a hotel employee decided to investigate the hotel's water storage tanks to see what the problem might be. He climbed to the roof and opened the tank, where authorities found the decomposing, naked body of Lamb, whose personal items were found nearby. After an autopsy, her death was labeled accidental. A report from NBC states the tank has a metal latch that can be opened, but authorities said access to the roof is secured with an alarm and lock. The single-room occupancy hotel has an unusual history. Night Stalker Richard Ramirez, who was found guilty of 14 slains in the 1980s, lived on the 14th floor for several months in 1985. And international serial killer Jack Unterweger is suspected of murdering three prostitutes during the time he lived there in 1991. He killed himself in jail in 1994. In 1962, a female occupant jumped out of one of the hotel windows, killing herself and a pedestrian on whom she landed. This further adds to the theory that this was some sort of demonic force possessing Lamb, leading to her mysterious death. Thanks for watching, and I appreciate the constant support I have been receiving. With all the craziness going on in the world right now, I'm glad I was able to entertain you. Stay safe, and don't forget to smash that like button and hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed my content. Also, don't forget to hit that bell so you get notified whenever I upload next. Sayonara.